I I don't want to lose that. That is not so good to me at all. So these things have been reported. So individuals, it has been even as intense as some of these other reports. Those are a little more rare, I think, in general. So types, I will just go over the overall types. There's clitoral orgasm. Typically, this is from clitoral stimulation. This is the most common. And this is why another factor is the majority of women have issues with just intercourse, sexual intercourse or penetration alone because it actually involves a bit of this for many people, okay? So that is why it's, it's with just um, intercourse, if it's not done in a way that actually gives stimulation here, then it's likely not gonna happen. Yeah, Bobby. Oh, I just had a question. You know how guys have like their first erection? Do women reach an age, like can, uh, I mean, I guess, like, could a girl have an orgasm, or is it like uh, when you start ovulating, or? It's typically around the time that puberty starts happening, mm -hmm. and the reproductive structures start awakening. Yeah. That's usually when it is for, for mo both males and females going through the process, okay. yeah. So it's rare for that to happen before that, because even the anatomy and the parts are not sexually mature yet. They're, they're still in the childhood or like infancy sort of state. So vaginal orgasm, that's direct stimulation of the vaginal wall, perhaps the base of the vaginal wall and the crust of the clitoris. If you remember, the clitoris is actually just the tip of the iceberg that you can see as far as the glands, and it has the shaft of the body and the crust, like almost like the legs that are embedded along the pubis bone. So that whole structure is just not the component that's showing, but it's actually rooted in at the top of the vagina. Yes, yeah, so part of, yeah, so if we look at inside the vagina, inside of the wall, it's the upper wall, a couple inches into the vagina, and Simone just brought this up, the G-spot. This is called the Grappenberg spot, okay? And we'll look at that in just a second. I have a picture of what it looks like. There's also uterine orgasm, or they call this an A-frame orgasm. The uterus is going from the anti-flex position to kind of straight up, and it tents, sort of. This, uh, there's a small region in the front wall of the vagina that I mentioned, that G-spot, okay? And if that is stimulated along with this whole process, this can lead to an A-frame or uterine orgasm. This is described as more intense contraction of the uterus, of the vagina, of course, and the pu pubococcygeus muscle that are sort of the base pelvic floor muscles and surrounding the anus and the vagina. So involving much more of the reproductive structures, okay, than just clitoral. So those are described as more intense because they're incorporating more of the body. Most orgasms, I will say, are likely blends of types. So they're not really discreetly only this or only this. A lot of times they're variants or uh, sort of combinations of types. Just to show where that Grappenberg, as it's been described, G-spot, a couple inches in, right in the, the upper wall, right, or the anterior wall, because it's towards the belly of the vagina, so this is the cervix, that's the uterus, here's the vagina, it's right in there, and actually, um, you can actually stimulate this region, do you want to know how? Yes. Or do you already know? Yes. 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 <laughs> you actually have to do like a come hither motion, yes. like you're saying come here. I thought that was a myth. <laughs> for, many people, for many people, it's effective. For, for many people, it's effective. And you can actually feel, there's actually a change in the texture of this particular place, it almost feels like it has little nodules on it, almost like a raspberry or something. It's a weird. Have you guys ever heard of this? Or did you know? Okay, yes. well, this, yeah. there's a little. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is the thing. Not everybody is as sensitive and has this as discreet as an area, and so it's not. It doesn't work for every single woman. Like it's, it's not always the like. If you get the G spot, there it doesn't. It's not like that for everybody. But there is a discrete little area right there that has different sensation and a different even anatomy or texture to it. All right. So another one of these kind of myths. Didn't you ask about this? Um, one of you asked about this. Sort of. Female ejaculation, squirting, <laughs> AKA it's squirting. It's it's, okay. So the sex studies that find is actually urine. Yes. So you're you're jumping ahead, legs. But yes. <laughs> So myth, recent studies say yes to female ejaculation. No, it's not a myth that actually can happen. And there are studies where they've actually measured it and looked at it and seen how many uh, women actually it happens to. About 10% of women expel a small amount of fluid during orgasm. And that's what's termed squirting, right? So, okay, there it is. Typically, it's from the lesser vestibular glands, okay? The little small glands that are on either side of the external urethral opening right there. Okay? And that's with all the external tissue and skin removed so we can see these structures. That is homologous to the male prostate gland. 
Okay, the male prostate gland makes fructose and sugar and fluid to support uh, the developing sperm or the sperm that are in seminal fluid. Also, the fluid can be the, uh, from the urethra, so urine, pee, okay, and vaginal secretions themselves. So there's, there's smooth muscle contractions happening in that whole area. So you've got great, lesser and greater vestibular glands in the female body. You've got the external urethral orifice, and you have the vaginal introitus. And there's a lot of muscular contractions that happen with orgasm. So what that can serve to do is contract and squeeze out fluid from those different glands and parts. So from here, from here, and from there. So for a lot of people, it's a combination. For It depends on the woman, but definitely it's, it's a component. It happens. Orgasm in the brain, studies of PET and fMRI scans found a lot of interesting results. During arousal or excitement phase, the amygdala, NA or nucleus accumbens, the VTA, it's the ventral tegmental area deep in the brain, the cerebellum, the back of the brain involved in motor control, and the pituitary, all of those sort of light up. There's a lot of activity in those areas. And then during the actual orgasm phase, it's high in the pleasure centers, specifically in the reward circuits of the brain. So massive dopamine release, sort of deep in the midbrain and the deep cerebrum that are involved in um, reward and motivation, pleasure. So those reward pleasure pathways light up with dopamine. And actually, it's really, really similar to somebody that's on heroin. So looking specifically in these reward circuits with orgasm, it lights up and secretes so much dopamine, it's almost indistinguishable from like, uh, heroin addict brain, if we do the same thing, look at, and they've done this looking at fMRI, functional MRIs. So there's a lot of neurotransmitters and hormones that help forge emotions, feeling of attachment, and even love. A lot of these are in that process. All right, so the resolution phase in the female returns to normal baseline over several minutes. <coughs> the internal cervical opening dilates, so the cervix actually opens up a little bit, leading to the uterus. One third of women actually sweat profusely, uh, many have intense <laughs> desire to sleep. <laughs> this is funny, but it's true. These things are true. A lot of people experience exactly this. So we did here. Here's the actual orgasm occurring. Smooth muscle contractions in the vaginal wall. Uh, contractions of the uterine area many times. Um, enlargement, engorgement of the clitoris. Okay, so all those anal sphincter contractions often happen. Resolution is going back to normal. And in this phase now here, you have the cervix open so that if there is seminal fluid in the female reproductive tract, it helps to aid and allow those sperm that are in that fluid to actually penetrate through the cervix and get up to the uterus and the fallopian tube where they are trying to sort of achieve or reach. Okay, so resolution phase is the end. It comes back to baseline levels. I would just end here with the male side. Quite similar in all men. All the phases really just different.